Hello, guys. There's two things I want to talk about this afternoon. First off, I was doing a little bit of research into quantitative tightening, you know. Uh, I was trying to find the exact amounts of, uh, of uh, mortgage-backed securities versus bonds that they're not rolling over and that they're uh, basically collecting the, the, the money uh, off of these. And I guess they destroy the money. Uh, this is directly taking liquidity out of the system in an exact reverse fashion from the original quantitative easing program. This is the exact opposite. They're pulling the money out of the system. And so in my research, you know, I just happened to stumble across this video on there from YouTube that's talking, uh, some guy talking about <laughs> quantitative tightening, and there wasn't that many YouTube videos on it. So I said, I wonder what this guy's got to say. So I clicked on the video, and there's my mug on there. <laughs> I clicked on my own video by accident. Anyway, I recorded off a minute of it. And I got thinking to myself, you know what? This is right. Uh, when they were pumping the money in during quantitative easing, you know, we could see more of a direct reaction from the markets to that stimulus. But now what they're doing is they're drawing the money out, and we're not seeing a instantaneous reaction. What we're, I think, what we're seeing, and I think I was right on the money with what I said. Well. I'm going to play the video for you in a second. But I think I was right on the money back way back in March. I think that this is what we're heading toward. We're heading toward a delayed reaction on all of this. And when it hits, it's going to be like a snap. So anyway, here's the video. Watch it. Now, taking a close look at this, really scrutinizing this. Uh, let's see, what do they say here? The math behind quantitative tightening, why it will end early. Yes, it's going to end early. Because what's going to happen is, is it's one of those things where you don't see the profound effect of it until all of a sudden everything crashes. So... What would this delayed reaction actually look like to the average guy, you know? Uh, it would be a, a deflationary uh, event like 2008, uh, but it would come very, very suddenly, and uh, it would hit without warning. It might be something that triggers it, but anyway, as they're sucking this money out, it kind of reminds me of a exper science experiment that involves exactly the same process. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen this done before, but people will take a jar or a bottle uh, or a pop can or anything that's a sealed container, and what they do is they pour hot water inside it, boil, I guess boiling hot water inside it. They take, take, take the cap off, pour boiling hot water. They shake it around a few times. They pour the boiling hot water out, and then they put the cap on the thing, and they set it on the counter, right? And it's sealed. When that thing starts to cool, nothing happens at first. You're going along for minutes and maybe five minutes, nothing happens. And all of a sudden it goes, bang! It sucks inwards. It's an implosion from the change in pressure. Uh, I don't know how many of you have seen this science experiment. Maybe I should put a clip of it. Okay, here's the clip. This is what I'm frightened could actually happen to the system. An implosion, because they're withdrawing this liquidity out. Nothing seems to be happening. I'm afraid that the reaction when it comes will be absolute and suddenly. Now, here's another thing I want to talk about. Uh, silver. I honestly believe that we're reaching the bottom right now of the manipulation that they can do with silver. I think they know it. I think everybody is, uh, that is really tied into the silver industry knows it, that they're reaching the final amount of manipulation that they can do with silver, and they can't 
I don't. I honestly do not think that they can take it much below fifteen bucks at this point. I think it, it, almost all of when you buy an ounce of physical silver now, almost all of that is going to translate into higher prices rather than lower prices. And so I think there's almost no very very small downside risk. You know everything you have out there in the world that you think you own like your money that's in the bank and everything has not only downside risk attached to it but it also has counterparty risk attached to it but real physical silver that's in your possession does not have any counterparty risk attached to it and what counterparty risk is it means basically it's like all your stocks have stocks and bonds they all have counterparty risk uh your uh your if you've got gold etfs they have counterparty risk uh an awful lot of things you have have counterparty risk Pound, counterparty risk is basically there's somebody else that has a piece of that pie that you think you own and this is very common nowadays especially with uh with uh uh, uh your derivatives Derivatives derive their value from an underlying asset, oftentimes. And there's always extended levels of counterparty risk on top of these things. And so you have no counterparty risk on your, on your physical silver. Even your money in the bank, if it's in digital form, has a tremendous amount of counterparty risk attached. Now, when you take that money out of the bank and it's in cash, it's in your possession you've just detached it from the counterparty risk that's in the, when it's in the bank it has a counterparty risk attached so we're living in this strange kind of world where you're best if you don't have any counterparty risk attached to your assets so if you own physical silver it's in your possession there's no counterparty risk and there's very little downside risk for the price falling with silver right now because silver has reached almost the bottom I say almost. There is a little bit. There's still a little bit of downside risk. It could, I hate to say it, but it could go lower, a little bit lower, you know, but there's very little downside risk compared to things like Bitcoin. Bitcoin has a large amount of downside risk, but, you know, Bitcoin overweighs that down, or I, my, in my opinion, overweighs the downside risk because of the upside potential. Anyway, that's why I'm buying some by the way so uh that's what i want to talk to you about is silver is reaching the bottom of bottoms scraping the bottom of the barrel i think that most of silver right now is upside potential i think that it has tremendous i think i think in the next three years or so we're going to see triple digit silver in price that means it's going to be over 100 bucks an ounce uh probably within the next three years in fact I'll tell you what, I've done videos on silver, and I said it was getting ready to take off around now, and I think it is. I think that this is it. I think the silver has finally reached the point where right soon it could take off at any time now. And if it takes off, I think we're going to be looking at maybe $21, $22 silver. And it can happen so quick. You just, all of a sudden, you just wake up and you go to check the price of silver and it'll be over 20 bucks it'll go up in a matter of of a, of a few weeks and maybe you check it once a month or something i don't know but and you go to check it and the price is over 20 bucks and this is what's going to happen i think and uh, so uh, people who's letting go letting go of their silver right now i would say don't let go of your silver unless you got bills you have to pay or something i know you might have bills you have to pay or something like that but try to hang on to it try to hang on a little bit longer because uh, i think that the worst is almost behind us now thank you guys for listening like and subscribe and uh, we'll catch you in the next show bye bye guys